But then again, like, I just, at that point, that's like hella like simping and like giving a lot of the support. I don't want to be like some trophy wife. Uh, a guy happens to want to like spoil their girl. Like, mm. of course, they by all means, like, I'm not going to stop them to do what they really want to do because that makes them happy, you know? Mm. You can't stop someone's happiness just because of that reason. Let's get this started. Hey guys, welcome to the Jolius Podcast. On such short notice, I'm here with my good friend Lil, who is also a wonderful, talented cosplayer, content creator, streamer. Welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. So introduce yourself. Who are you? What do you do? And how did you do it? My name is Lil Bafara, and my cosplay name I go by is Chuku. And I've been like liking cosplay since the day that I was literally like first watching Sailor Moon and I would say Yu Yu Hakusho since like elementary school and just that uh, my cosplay career didn't really take off until like I reached I guess like middle school was when I went to my first convention during that time and then I've been cosplaying since then I think like about 13 to 14 years now since then wow, that's first a long it started, time. yeah like it first started off like buying cosplay. That's when I started to transition off into trying to like make my own costumes for myself. And I wanted to get into prop making just because I do have a thing for like being crafty a lot of the time. It's kind of funny because like it runs in the family too. Just like how everybody's very artistic and just hands on. And then I just happened to just get really into the hang of just making cosplay through that being very crafty with my own stuff and then that's when everybody started to take notice like how much progress I put into it so it's just like I really like just how the attention that gives me so I would love to just continue making cosplay because of that to give the recognition and to let people know that anybody can be creative with like making their own things cool cool artist at heart you said your family had a background in it so you just went with it and then you just love the attention and how much recognition you got from it. That's what I'm, what I'm hearing, right? Yeah, it's just like my aunt and I know my mom on are my mom's side. They all like like to draw. They're very creative when it comes to like using like house appliances around. Like when something's broken or something, they just tend to just creatively fix in a way that it's like very convenient. And then it's just that with just that creative mind that they like tend to use just within the house. Just like, I feel like in turn just makes when we cosplay, it's just, we get like hella crafty with that kind of stuff. Of it. Okay. For sure. For sure. Creative, very innovative. And uh, wow. I didn't think about it like that. So do you have like those same tendencies that you got from your family where it's all like you improvise a lot, basically? Oh yeah. A lot of improvision, I would say just to make things work. For, for sure just because that if something just doesn't work we just still like try to work our way around to just try and fix it in some way hopefully that like it like works I guess <laughs> yeah yeah After fail, does it trial and error you know yeah for sure most definitely I mean because within the cosplay community fashion or whatever you have to deal with clothing there's always going to be some mishaps where it's all like oh there's going to be a rip and tear oh maybe you forgot this prop oh, maybe, you know, something happens and you possibly have some control of it where you, you have a window of opportunity to fix it because some people don't or they just don't know how to improvise and, like, roll with the punches, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the thing with, like, cosplay is that I get friends even asking me, saying, like, how can you, like, creatively try to, like, draw off, um, draw off like, a, a draft of a cosplay? But then... Sometimes people are just very terrible at drawing that, like, they tend to just go with the flow with just how they should make it, in a sense. And they always just complain to me saying, like, oh, it's just so hard to be creative in this kind of, like, hobby just because, like, they're not creative themselves because they just don't know how to draw or, like, be crafty with their things and stuff. But, I mean, like, you know, like, because anybody just can do anything just with, I say with just crafting things in general, mm -hmm. like a lot of it does take like a lot of research to just find out where 
uh, where to start. And that's like probably like the most hardest thing is to really try to figure out how you can actually get like these materials, how to get, use them and everything. But there's like, not gonna lie, there's a lot of useful resources out there. Really good cosplayers that actually know how to make their props that actually show how to just make uh, certain things, which I do happen to refer to YouTube a lot of the time when I make my cosplays. I tend to just forget on the top of my head on like how to make certain things for cosplay, like say how to do armor for an example. And just that um, with that kind of thing, like I know it just takes certain blades. It takes like a heat gun to actually try to mold like say a foam for an example, which is a normal cosplay material that most cosplayers use. It just takes a lot of YouTube over time to actually really figure out how to actually make the cosplays and get used to what you feel comfortable with when making props. My sisters and I are, when we like make cosplay and everything, I learned a lot of things through my younger sister that was very, very good with just like props in general. Oh, wow. And then I just happened to get her advice, like how to make things. But like literally she learns a lot of the stuff that she knows for making props is through YouTube. And then I just like, I felt like I kind of didn't really want to keep asking her every time, like how to just like make things. Cause I want to be also just creative on my side too. So I also like try to go back to YouTube and figure out just like how to do it myself also. I like that with cosplay, like when having like a sibling, especially, it's just very nice to have some help or like a second hand when it comes to just making cosplay rather than by yourself. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. For sure. That's really good to hear. As you said, your family just has a creative artistic background. And since you got into the cosplay scene, if I recall from your sister, who also helps you out as well, that just makes it more easier, more convenient, more fun and more collaborative. It is. That's the thing that like every time that we try to figure out for our next convention, we just literally happen to try to figure out what's our next cosplay next. And like, of course, like, because we're related and everything, we just happen to just collaborate or like coordinate with each other pretty well uh, just to figure out how, like what we can do. We tend to like make things just time, just on time, just for the, like events that we really want to try to go to also. Okay, well, that's good. That's really fun. Luckily, there's no you know, sister mishaps or fights where it's like, oh, crap, we can't go to this. Oh, crap, we can't go to that. Oh, no. There's I guess literally, I mean, obviously, just because, you know, siblings, how they're just like is they always tend to just like not agree on some things, you know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I just can't help that. Like, that's just how we are. Because I always like tend to like tease my sister a lot or just how we like make our stuff and everything like there are stressful moments I'm not gonna lie uh yeah how's your relationship with your <laughs> sisters though I mean you know as you said not every family relationship is perfect but you know it's there oh yeah hell yeah like my sisters and I we happen to just grow up together forcibly trying like loving each other just because literally our mom and dad would like have us to just keep us together most of the time anywhere that we like go out if we want to like go to the mall and we want to just like try to go by ourselves, our parents are always like telling us stick together, stay together, stay together, just safe. It's kind of like I can never go off anywhere by myself unless it's with my sisters, just because our parents want to, to have like that bonding moment and also just like be able to just take care of each other. And just that with my family, like we all happen to just want to keep everybody just together and not like apart. So we just always like find stuff like we would do together. Like, yes, like we cosplay together. Um, other things that we do, we do play games. But just like as of now, like because I live in, currently in L.A. And then my sis, my older sister is in San Jose and my younger sister is still in the Monterey area. We all like have like our own lives just doing like our own stuff. I still keep in contact with them whenever I can. But normally it's just like when it's like, cosplay related or just anime conventions that we want to try to attend to like we just like that's probably the only <laughs> time we actually get serious and talking about like some things about like those that how long have you been doing twitch for for the audience who doesn't know twitch is basically a platform where you can go on and live stream and you could just play games and you have viewers watch you play games basically or just do whatever i was probably doing Twitch for like maybe like a one to two years. Mm -hmm. But then 
I mean, all the setup that I have, you know, my mic and everything, webcam and my ring light and stuff. I just stopped just because like when I was still living with my other housemate, we like pretty much shared a room that kind of didn't really have too much of a privacy where we could like be loud and talk like with our friends or like viewers and everything. It was like very complicated that when he would play games like right behind me, it it like captures that on my webcam, like everything that he says when he's gaming, he's just like like cussing or something or yelling at like people while he just does that. So I'm just like, I think I'm just gonna stop streaming so he doesn't oh God. like That's so awkward. it doesn't like intercept anything uh that I'm just busy with and trying to stream. So it's just um, Oh God, that must be so embarrassing. It's all like he, he has like a beer bottle in the back or something. It's all like, oh God. <laughs> Oh God, hopefully TOS doesn't get you right now. Yeah, that's just like, I literally just have a, that's why like I completely stopped because like it's so embarrassing. Just like, I don't know what everybody might think with just my house face being so loud. <laughs> so I still thought like maybe going back into streaming. I still think about it now that like, like I moved out and like I have my own room, I could be able to actually talk to my viewers if I still have any, to be honest. I've been oh, using boy. years. Oh boy, I believe in you, Lil. I play a lot of Valorant and a lot of scary games. I, I'm more into just uh, horror games or just FPS shooters, I would say. Mm -hmm. Those are like one of the funnest games. Mm -hmm. You like play, play, you play Phasma, Phasma, what's it called? Phasmophobia? Yeah, um, Phasmophobia. Uh -huh. um, it's an okay game. Uh, I do like it when I first started playing it, but things started ending up being very repetitive just because you know how like in Phasma, like you have to like call out to the ghosts for them to just come out so you could like try to get evidence from them mm -hmm. like what kind of ghost it is it just that like it became like too slow for me that I wait until like the ghost comes out and just that it literally takes forever until like like to trigger them in some way if you like mess around with them <laughs> oh Jesus okay yeah I definitely get it you know phasmophobia it's not for everyone you know games are very repetitive moba games like league of legends do you still play that yes or no oh my gosh i that's the thing like if it's league or riot games like i completely stopped playing it but i'm not gonna lie i would still go back to playing it if i like if my friends literally pressure me to just getting back into it but at the moment i mean like right now it's just valorant because <laughs> i mean that's like where everybody literally switched off to from League and then to Valorant. I'm just like following the flow where like what kind of games everybody's playing nowadays. So whatever's trendy, taking accounts of just trying it, I would say. Okay, okay. Just doing the mainstream stuff and just hanging out with your friends doing it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Quality time with friends is important. <laughs> yeah, most definitely, most definitely. You said you recently moved to LA with your friends or? So I actually moved out here just so that I could finish my fashion degree at Cal Poly Pomona. Mm -hmm. This is actually going to be my last semester until I finish. Oh, so, shit. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I think that I want to find a job out here when I do fashion. But other than that, uh, if I ever find like a job out in NorCal, if there is any job openings for like fashion, I guess, mm -hmm. I would probably like look into it just because like I do get homesick. And I really do like miss my friends and family or my family that I love miss hanging out all the time. So I would just have to see like where my career takes me and see from there. But for sure, like fashion that I'm doing uh, does pretty much make sense when I'm like out here because, you know, there's like a lot of job openings for that kind of position. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. L L.A. is all like the land of the industry, you know, artists, photographers. That's, that's what yeah. I like. And especially as like a entrepreneur myself, just having like my own brand also for selling and clothing. It's just that. It does help a lot to like source like what kind of clothes to get out here mm -hmm. and also um, just to make clothes in general when printing out clothes too. Because back at home in NorCal, like there's like barely just not much. Um, I would say not too many companies that do the work that I would say that I would like it to be done. In LA, it's like really, really nice to have. Okay, okay. So you're trying to do your certain niche of fashion design and branding in LA, where in Northern California, such as like San Francisco or whatever, it can't fulfill the needs or the work that you're trying to do. 
Yeah, pretty much. It's just that San Jose is more like a um, a techie kind of place. They don't really cater too much into like fashion, which is why I didn't really want to stick around NorCal for that um, reason. But there is like, we could still consider San Francisco as a very fashionable city, you know? Like, mm. I can't lie. Like, there's also like opportunities out there for like, especially my kind of like work that I would want to do, which is uh, fashion design. I would probably like maybe want to apply out there. But then again, like, I'm not really into the city of San Francisco as much just because uh, I don't really like gloomy weather. <laughs> and okay. then I just, and just okay. the cost of living in general in San Francisco is so high right now. Compared to, I would say, LA housing, it's it's still like a decent pricing housing out here, but I would say that it's a little bit less than San Francisco for sure. So I might still continue want to like want to live out here, maybe maybe like two to three more years in LA probably, and maybe like probably go back to NorCal. Just whatever that future takes me. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> so whimsical and wanderlust, though. So very. I'm not going to say indecisive, but so very flowy. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, we're going to try to do it this way. We're going to see where it's going to go. You still kind of have a plan, but you're still going to do what you need to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would just, there's like so much goals that I do have in mind when it comes to just cosplaying and being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It's just that like, there's a lot of things that you have to juggle. And especially for me, like I'm still a student and I'm still concentrating on trying to like graduate this semester. Currently, I'm dealing with a lot of things at the moment. It's just when you're concentrating, trying to graduate, like you want to pass your classes. Like you don't want to fuck up the semester and just retake the classes again. Like that's what I'm really like scared for. And that also I'm progressively trying to make new products for my clothing brand because I do attend conventions with another uh, friend of mine that we tend to like work on our brands together and sell our products at these conventions. I'm still thinking about like what kind of clothes I do want to happen to make and also like the kind of prints I do want to like draw up and everything because like I am in like the process of also rebranding my things. I am like literally trying like stressing myself out thinking how that's going to even be done at the moment. So there's that to juggle. The cosplays that I really like want to make is like so difficult that like it takes so much time, so much effort and energy to just try to get like these materials all together to try to like make this like on a timely basis, especially. I always tend to at least like for an event, one of the cosplay events or anime events I uh, tend to apply or go to is summer or summer or spring time around like December or fall. I don't really uh, attend like anime conventions around this time just because like I've always been used to like having the time to make a year in advance for like cosplay for bigger events like anime expo or kind of thing, which I mostly go to and look forward to uh, cosplaying at. Oh boy, anime and anime expo. You know, anime expo is like every year it's getting exorbitantly larger and larger where people cannot even walk through those hallways and you're just a pack of sardines. Oh my goodness. It's still like that when the last time I attended like this year, uh, that I would say that after that now, like, because they uh, let people's like into anime expo, they now allow like more guests to attend their event mm -hmm. that they literally last uh, or this year, I think what happened was that they were over capacity for Anime Expo this year, that they stopped having people to, to like buy tickets and cap at whatever their max capacity was to the convention because it became too overcrowded. And it became, I think it was like a hazard thing also that people still had to wear masks around, I guess, still. They still, res they still kind of restricted, but not going to lie, literally like, no one had mask on in like <laughs> anime expo so oh everybody God. just literally like went on with the convention like it was like a normal anime expo every year okay that that's good to hear kind of contradictory yeah. and ironic you know i'm in vegas right now and uh we, we kind of basically as you said we, we we don't act like it exists we're basically almost back to normal mm -hmm. yeah slightly there i mean conventions are still going back to mm -hmm. like normal for normal attendance so i mean that's why like yes and the mask mandate like has been lifted in california too so it's just that yeah no one just 
not everybody just wear masks to these events anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is what it is. All right, Lil. Top three. Top three cosplays you like wearing at your conventions. Go. <sighs> Zeno Saga. I like Azerling cosplay, and also recently I made just a Gantz cosplay also uh, with my friends too. Yeah, um, my Gantz cosplay that I did with my four other friends. One friend asked me to try to make like one of the biggest guns in that anime. And like literally I ended up like making it, but then last minute trying to paint, like do finishing touches before like a convention. Or I would say it was during, I think, oh, Crunchyroll Expo was the last convention that I literally went to. And then mm -hmm. I had to crunch everything by trying to paint and finish what I could do with the gun and try to make it look good. And like, oh man, like it was actually very stressful for me because I would stay up. I think the last, I was like, stayed up, I was staying up until like 4 a.m. in the morning trying to finish like the paint job. And like my friends were there like at my sister's house because we were staying there um, over the week for Crunchyroll Expo that she was having a party there. Mm. And my friends were literally like helping me paint and finish like the gun for like the next day that we were going to cosplay at. So it was very stressful, but so worth it because the construction and the job and the paint job is just so good. What a relief. Like, I'm actually like so proud of myself. Like, those stressful times, stressful, stressful moments of con crunching is like the worst thing of anxiety <laughs> trying to finish. I bet. It's like, you know, as you said, you're in school. It's like trying to finish a project on like the last two to three days or in the last week. <laughs> But you like barely did any work. So you decided to do everything last minute, basically. But literally in panic mode <laughs> the whole time, like trying to get it done. Like that's what I just hate about. And almost what every house cosplayer hates about is just con crunching until like the day of a con. It's just, oh, it's just too much work. You know how you fix that, Lil? You know how you fix that? How? You do it not the week or the day before. It's that simple. <laughs> That's even more stressful if it's the day before. Hey, but you know some people do the day before con crunching. That's even, oh my god, you don't even understand. I just, that's why, like, I always, like, try to at least finish a week before a con, for sure. Or even a month. Even a month before, like, a con. Like, that's even better, because then I could, like, focus on thinking about, like, what else I should do next. Like, think about, um... Maybe like a last minute cosplay, I might try to be able to finish on time. I don't know. Like anything, just anything that just finishes a lot in advance before that, uh, the time of date of debuting your cosplay, for sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, okay, so how do you think you can remedy this problem in the cosplay community? Because this is definitely like a weird social issue fad that I've been seeing. Because I'm not a cosplayer, yeah. so I don't understand it. But like... It seems like an actual thing that cosplayers use as like a social media for attention. But but it's actually a thing though where people procrastinate. What do you think mm -hmm. in your personal opinion is it's, like a solution? Yeah, go ahead. It's just that there's so much drama in the cosplay community that it just it's so obvious just how people act towards like body shaming and the construction of cosplay or like the kind of race that you are like mm -hmm. matters when it comes to just being accurate to your character is like pretty toxic it's it's actually really sad i get the posts that like i would post on reddit for an example a good example is that like i was in my taiho uh race queen cosplay mm -hmm. uh from azure lane and posted that to reddit just to show like the appreciation for the cosplay that i wore and just that literally people talk about just how like too skinny i am or i don't have like the big boobas <laughs> to really accentuate the actual essence of the cosplay uh the uh anime character it's just sad that like body shaming it still exists i guess like up to a beauty standard just like how well you dress in the cosplay is kind of really sad because like the whole point to like cosplaying is just to actually really enjoy what you wear in and also like the appreciation of the character that you people don't really that I don't really understand that and just most definitely you know <laughs> screw those haters because like come on like yeah. why well why why body body i mean body shame somebody's happiness you know like they're happy and 
whatever they wear and they're passionate about it like that's all that matters it's so sad just poor assholes of just seeing those kind of things oh I mean speaking of like attending conventions I'm gonna be a guest at PMX you mm -hmm. know Pacific Media Expo no I do not it was like a small con that started back in 2003 in uh I believe it was at the anime convention oh where anime expo used to be actually mm -hmm. or that that location in downtown LA the person that owns anime expo made PMX and so he made that small version just to have more conventions around the Los Angeles area okay but then they said that like the convention wasn't as successful because they expected to have 10,000 people attend to this convention but then oh, or have the at least the same amount of capacity it was for uh, anime expo but it ended up being like 3,000 instead so like since then since 2003 pmx has been like a small convention since probably up until now they're going to be having it in somewhere in san gabriel at like this hotel and stuff so it's gonna be like a really small event and then i was asked to be a guest like they sent me an email saying that would you like to be a cosplay guest? We'll also give you like two free badges to attend the convention. I was like, oh, yes, yeah, like this would be a really big opportunity to like to try it out because I've never like been asked uh, another convention to be a guest at. It's just crazy like where how many years you've been doing cosplay to like where, where it gets you now. It's like, wow, what an opportunity. So I didn't want to like let that down. And it's going to be in the 22nd of October. So I might be going on Saturday or Friday, probably. Oh boy, don't disappoint your fans. You should like be definite with those answers right there. That's what they were like. Ex they're expecting me to like sell prints, Polaroid prints also. And honestly, like, because I never like had a costly booth before. So I don't know what to expect. So I'm asking like a lot of uh, advice from friends, friends that are photographers that are cosplay friends and stuff and what they do with their booths and stuff. So I'm just like, Trying to get advice at the moment how that works. Okay, for sure. I mean, it looks like you already got it, you know? This is like, I don't know if this is like Like, it's first... natural, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. I feel it's like a natural thing to, like, figure out what to do, like, at a booth. But still, it's just that, I don't know, like, the price points of those kind of products they sell. And I don't know, like, what else, like, they, like, provide also. Yeah, like, the expectations is just... I don't know exactly like what to do exactly, but hey, I feel you, like it's obvious. Just sell merch. Usually, you have to do like you know market research or just like simple like sales research. What the baseline is, you yourself, your personal brand is what you're selling to your people and your audience, which is what you're trying to do to make money. But not just to make money, but because this is your thing, this is your niche, this is what you do to have fun. This is like one of your ways of life. So it's pretty yeah. cool that you have an opportunity to like come through and have a opportunity to monetize you know yeah uh, I mean like like a lot of that like comes through I would say the exposure through Instagram because mm -hmm. like I'm more of like an Instagram user so it's just I tend to happen like uh do the hashtags to get myself more out there and everything but like nowadays nobody like uses hashtags anymore now it's like the thing about it is like uh, videos like reels or like tiktok yeah. and everything but i don't use i'm not really much of a tiktok user like that's the hard thing about trying to catch up with the new generation is just being more content savvy by using these apps and stuff so that's just like something i'm not really good at is using that because um i get kind of shy to figure out or make videos to um make tiktoks or get that kind of exposure when it comes to cosplaying um, cause I don't know what to do, like dance, uh -huh. dance. I mean, um, yeah. Well, I mean, I could do cosplay construction, uh, for like the TikToks too or reels. I mean, that's what I do on my Instagram. It's kind of hard, like especially when we're recording yourself when you don't have a stand. So I always like leave it on the floor or put uh -huh. like lying around somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you you should buy a stand, Lil, because yeah, most of these girls, not even cosplayers, anything that's female that's like doing personal branding or. God forbid has an OnlyFans, but whatever, you know, they, they just they just have their they have the stand, all they just do is dance and they get like a thousand or like twenty thousand views. Exactly. That's the thing, is that I still have not really invested like those big ass ring lights. I have like small ring lights, uh, the small ring light and stuff, but mm -hmm. I haven't really thought of just getting one just yet, because like 
I have my lazy moments too. So <laughs> I never concentrated on just getting it. Yo, no worries. No worries. You can go get it now. You have like tons of contacts. You have tons of friends in your network. I'm pretty sure you can get one. Oh my goodness. I mean, I do have nice friends out there that tend to uh, give me some things like on a whim oh. randomly sometimes. It's oh. just, Mm, huh. I'm not asking for this. Like, why? Okay, you should definitely, you know, take that opportunity. You know, it's all like it's there. <laughs> That's exactly do? what it, I mean. Like, I'm not gonna back down on a no if someone gives me something. Like, I can't deny a gift if they just give me something. I'm more than happy and appreciate that they do. Like, give me something. It's just they don't have to be obligated to just do that for me. I feel so bad, but I have no choice because they already got it. <laughs> Too freaking late. Hey, 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 Lil, it's a gift. You're not obligated to give a gift back unless you choose to, which I understand. That's the thing, and I can be like a giving person, so it just makes me want to be wanting to give them something too. So I don't know what to give back. It's kind of hard. <laughs> no, no, Lil, you're good. I'm pretty <laughs> sure in their minds they're going to be like, you are the gift. I'm trying to give you back value because I feel like a piece of shit right now. Oh, dude, I would still feel like a piece of shit because I still feel bad. What? Oh, God, you are. You're probably one of the kindest female friends I have right now. Like other girls would be like, oh, thank you. And then just like, fuck off. I'm like, what the fuck? I just don't want to be ungrateful of anything at all. Like I Mm -hmm. want to I want to show my appreciation for sure for that kind of stuff, which is why, like, when it just comes to. Well, I mean, I do kind of have like an OnlyFans also. So it's just that the offers like. When they ask me, yeah, like, say, oh, discounts, is is that okay? Like, I could get a discount off of, like, your stuff or whatever. I'd be like, oh, well, because now, like, since you did something for me and everything, like, I'll definitely, like, fall through a discount with you or something. Okay, for sure. Interesting that you say you have an OnlyFans because there's a big stigmatization towards it. It's so on and off, yeah. It just tends to be, like, on and off with just how people look at OnlyFans because it's like there's like a good notion of it but then there's a bad way of it of seeing it just because people that want to like look for jobs or something like that like if they find out like you have an OnlyFans for trying to make money from I don't know what they call it sex working or whatever it's such a norm like nowadays like I feel people now need to understand that OnlyFans that definitely is like an actual job that people are making actual money off of for sure People that want to work home remotely, like, want to do OnlyFans for these kind of reasons. For me, like, I do tend to get kind of nervous of just, like, the kind of content I do expose myself on OnlyFans just because, like, anybody can leak your thing. And, like, that's probably, like, the most scariest thing to, like, you can't really trust no one if they, like, tend to, like, literally expose you in that way. Yeah, for sure. I live in Vegas, and basically those big cities like Vegas, Miami, New York, or some women, you know, they just throw their only fans out there trying to make you know fast cash and all that sometimes they do care about that status shaming aspect but at the end of the day you're trying to make money you're trying to get through life you're trying to get the yeah, bag it that's is, the it thing. is like i feel like now in this generation no one like no one gives a shit when they are actively using only fans like i said it's like it's quite a norm and also it's just that the joke that persists and consistently going on with that is because it's just that, like, oh, you have an OnlyFans, huh? Also, like, my feet pictures are in something like that. And <laughs> literally, like, that's literally just promoting yourself to, like, really urge you to do OnlyFans for sure. I felt like I was, uh, I have, like, a lot of support from friends, um, especially just, like, they say, like, oh, you have a lot of costly things or costly loots that you could, like, definitely sell on OnlyFans. And, like, I know, like, uh, it'd be nice to just, like, have, like, side hustle on the side for that kind of stuff so I just wanted to first start off with like um selling loot and my cosplay on OnlyFans and see how I'm comfortable from there yeah it's like it's pretty comfortable like for doing that for I started OnlyFans two oh uh, I think oh wait two years ago two years ago in April I believe oh there you it's go not that, it's not really that long ago because I mean what is it to do during COVID you know when you're like stuck at home most of the time yeah 2020 that 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 was the year man anything remote anything if you're a twitch streamer sold only fans whatever the hell it is on a computer you made money 
And there was an increase and rise and spike within uh, OnlyFans outreach because, you know, everyone was home. What, what were you going to do? Yeah, exactly. And just that, like, people tend to, or, like, during those times, people are already losing their jobs, you know? For me, like, it's just nice that, like, as a student, especially taking, like, so many classes during the semester, the only times that, like, fit that was, like, more flexible with me is, like, working with OnlyFans. Because me trying to apply to, like, other places, like, being a server, for an example, because like I've done serving for four years at the time. And just that being a server is kind of like a little bit tedious for like hours wise. For my experience, it's just that you have to try to like be available on the weekends or like somewhere during the week. Yeah, I would just literally like people that would hire for servers like that, like tend to just get a little bit picky about hours. And then my scheduling is kind of not that flexible, especially with school. Hey, that's that's the life, you know, when you're trying to pursue your dreams and your career, you will not have time to do anything fun at all. So you said that I, I go to like the clubs and stuff, right? Yeah. So, so actually, I'm at work. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, oh, yeah. I yeah. remember you mentioned that because, uh, yeah, the work that you uh, that you do, like, damn, like, I never expected that you would just be into that kind of work either. Really? What, what, yeah. what did you think I was going to do? I thought like more along the lines of like photography since like you're so good with like your photos, you know? So I was guessing like wedding or do you do wedding? I will, I will never do weddings. <laughs> I hear like a lot of things about that. Like how weddings tend to be just, they like tend to use, oh, there's a lot of coordination with like wedding photography, but it's it, a lot it, of money. There's a lot of money there. There's a lot of headaches, honestly, because, oh boy, if you screw up like one thing in the wedding, you're just automatically screwed, especially since your money's on the line. Oh, I know. It's, yeah. yeah, like I have like photographer friends like telling me that, oh, the pay is really good, but it can be, what is it? Uh, kind of just like a little bit stressful in there sometimes. Like what they tell me, it's just that they tend to be um, demanding of like photos and how they want it, I guess. Yes. Yeah. No, they, they are so heavily. It does make sense, though. The bride yeah. and or the groom has paid so much money just to look super 110 perfect in like a video or a photo. You know, you, you know. can't you can't screw that up. That's so awkward. Exactly. I mean, like, not going to lie, I would like to have nice photos, too. But I mean, the price of just thinking about like on a wedding photographer being out, that's like a lot still. Yeah, for sure. And for, for sure. me, like, I don't even know if I'm going to get married. Really? I don't know like I get hella like is it nervous about marriage it's just I think that's just like a uh a, what what generation are we we're oh millennials sorry yeah, like, yeah. well I'm us not millennials even... get hella yeah. like nervous about like getting married and stuff just because yeah, like something about like with boomers leaving us with they had a, like an easy way of like living their lives which is why they happen to have like a lot of children back in those years mm -hmm. because of course like booming like the boomers and stuff so yeah, it's just, um, it's just that like their living expenses were cheap back then, but us, it's just like damn, everything's just so expensive for us millennials. Yeah, well, not just that. Uh, their life expectancy was shorter than ours because we can live longer, like up to like at most a hundred to hundred twenty years. For them, it was like I don't know sixty to eighty years. We have advanced oh, so far in society. No way. I think I heard that like somewhere. Like I heard about. I think it was like one day I stumbled across like Facebook that talked uh -uh. about. That. <laughs> yeah. So I'm assuming from your views, then you just don't see yourself getting married anytime soon. I feel that a lot of just my goals are not achieved yet, just yet, which I feel like a marriage for me, like I do want to achieve it with somebody. Also, like if I'm ready, I would just have to actually be active on trying to finish up my goals that I really want to try to complete. Uh, I don't want to have like distractions, I would say. I want to just like have support from the friends and the person that I love to like help me get to like where I need to be financially stable for an example and also just like uh, I would say get a recognition from people that actually realize like my work because mm -hmm. I feel I my whole premise to everything is trying to get everybody to like notice like notice me like my artwork my business and as me as a person just to get myself out there more. Just a random thought. Would you ever go the traditional route? So basically the guy can just like provide all the money, all the stuff for you. And you just got to be like a mom. 
just basic traditional oh, like mom. Oh, like a stay-at-home mom, kind of? Uh, almost a stay-at-home mom. You can, you can, like, you know, go out once in a while and do, like, your hobbies and stuff. Like, you know, we're in the modern day age. We can do something. If I, liter- if I had somebody to, like, take care of me like that, it'd be nice to, like, have somebody to, like, actually cover the expenses for you. But then again, like, I just... At that point, that's like hella like simping <laughs> and like giving a lot of the support to like someone that that doesn't want to work, I would say. Just because like for me, like I do want to be like a hardworking person. So I want to be okay. able to be equal with like my companionship and like work together with him by like also like taking care of myself too. Because like I do want to like live my life like independently course, and not yeah. like have too many people actually help me with things I would say so I want like people to see that for me like as attractive just because like as a woman you know like doing things independently just it's like you show like that confidence okay like in your yeah. lifestyle and also just having happen happening to just be able to do like everything on your own so like okay. I wouldn't mind like working and like also like supporting uh my companion just like have equal terms, you know? Okay, for sure, for sure. You have to have it unbalanced. Balance, okay. <laughs> One thing you said that was really funny, you said, I'm going to paraphrase this, traditional marriage is kind of simping. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. I've never heard of that before. I'm like, wow, traditional marriage is simping. I, hmm. I don't want to be like some trophy wife. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. Uh, I mean, it really depends on the relationship. That uh, Everybody is most likely going to be different. If the guy happens to want to, like, spoil their girl, like, mm. of course, like, they, by all means, like, I'm not going to stop them to, like, do what they really want to do because that makes them happy, you know? Mm. You can't stop someone's happiness just because of that reason. But it's just that, like, literally for me on the side, I just feel, like, so bad. Like, they're doing so much for me. And then, like... I, I like take my time want to like give back to them and stuff but they like they seriously just keep giving things <laughs> I would say okay so like, I said, like there has to be a balance in between the two so I just would don't mind contributing also and like uh, give gifts too do my part 